stem cells from an unborn fetus, the mother's going to have an abortion anyway. As the abortion, rather than discard that fetus, they harvest the stem cells. We look at one of the most divisive issues in America, abortion. We have to bomb the torch clinic, so be it. The deadly shooting rampage at a Planned Parenthood clinic. What bothers me is the anti-abortion people. If their kid was sick, or their kid had a disease, if they were any type of parent, they'd be knocking everybody out in line to be the first one here. And there's no doubt about it. And I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any one of them. When someone dies, that they choose to donate their organs to give life, I think, in collecting stem cells, it's a great way of just giving life. The way I feel about it is those babies are going to get aborted anyways. That's the way I feel. Might as well make God made something readily available. If you're going to have an abortion, don't waste what can save someone's life. I, I don't want you to have an abortion, but if you're going to, don't waste. And, and people need to realize that the availability of where, wherever it comes from, um, it is, is God's will. Another laboratory has reduced their effort on studies that require fetal tissues, despite the importance of this research, due to concerns about personal safety. The significance of fetal tissue research has been reiterated by other leading research institutions, including Harvard, the Yale School of Medicine, and the University of Minnesota. stem cells, fetal stem cells, ever become widely used, it will change the entire profit picture of the pharmaceutical industry. Because they don't make their money on well people, they make their money on sick people. And uh, continually pumping drugs of all kinds into them. That is how the medical profession survives, on drugs. I have not had one pain episode the first time in 18 years. I am totally pain free and medication free. The people who have an illness who are going to be dead in 12 to 15 years should have an alternative to sit on the sidelines and wait for a triple blind placebo flop it, flop it, you know, experiment. There should be something else. That's, it's thick that we know how to help people and cure illness, and we can't do it. So we realized there was nothing that mainstream medicine had. We'd been to absolutely every doctor we possibly could. It's, it's so exciting. For the it's first strong. time, I see the light in the end of the tunnel. I see a light. We can ease your dying with medicine. And that's not something I wanted to hear. So going to a different country for treatment sounds a lot better than that. I was very skeptical, very skeptical. It's helped me tremendously with just one treatment. I've gone from middle school, I've had, and then high school as well, almost flunking, staying up till two in the morning with my parents, just so they could help me because I couldn't even do it myself. Till now I'm making straight A's and B's, uh, which is phenomenal. So you're saying in the four month time that you're making better grades than you've ever had? Yeah, actually beneficial, yeah, absolutely. Without taking medication now, five ants, ADHD, um, Adderall. She was diagnosed with a rare form of uh, muscular dystrophy. After the very first treatment, within that next week, she went from falling 15 to 20 times a day down to no times. She doesn't fall anymore. Her gait was really wobbly all over the place, and now she walks super straight to be able to walk in a straight line. Something is working well for you. Something is working well for me, and I'm not doing anything else, so. What's important is that it is chronic lymphocytic leukemia and that it hasn't progressed and that you're not sick. Which is why once a year, like an insurance policy, I go back and get the stem cells. I've never seen anything quite like this, I gotta be honest. If I had the best, I, I would never think 
Anything like this would work. I haven't seen anybody get this well. What can I tell you except that we're looking at a 20th century miracle. And you wouldn't let him walk without assistance. So look where we are today. So do you mind if I uh, shoot, kill me? Go ahead and kill me. I'm still an emeritus associate professor in chemical engineering and adjunct professor in mechanical engineering at Georgia Tech. I also have Parkinson's disease. Tell me, tell me how, uh, what, how you feel about today. I can tell the difference from the time I first started getting the treatment. How do you feel about the fact that you have to, that this isn't available like readily in the States, like in the opinion? Um, in my opinion, based on what I know about it now, I think it's criminal. You're looking, you're looking really good. How do you feel? I'm feeling much better. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, like, is your natural setting up really good? Right. Yeah. How do you feel now? As far as a, a lot better. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better. That's, that's amazing. I'm yeah. not trembling so much. In terms of the evolution of medicine, if you think about the 20th century, we turned chemistry to the service of medicine. That is, we learned how to deliver small molecules as drugs. But if we can learn how to deliver cells as medicines and actually repair and regenerate these degenerating tissues, we'll have a major impact on medicine. I think it's inevitable. There are many different types of stem cells. The ones we hear most about are embryonic stem cells, umbilical cord stem cells, and adult stem cells. These different stem cell types should not be confused with one another, as they are not all created equal, nor are they the focus of this stem cell story. Instead, for this journey, we focused on fetal stem cells, arguably the most contested and controversial form of stem cell therapy to date. <laughs>